Okay, let's get used to it now like this. Right. Yeah, I wanted to sit with a little. I did want to sit like this <laughs> specifically, actually. I wanted to have a little clip on mic. Oh, look at me, I'm Mr. TV, but it wasn't picking them up, so um, the sounds. So <laughs> I can't sit with this this microphone. You might notice already. I've got a little string on my arm, but we'll get to that because I'm interested. I'm just, look how thin I am, man. I'm so thin. This doesn't even... I look even thinner like this, actually. I'd like to get fat. So if any there's any women out there, or strong, anyway, you want to see me eat a lot of food. Because I do like eating a hell of a lot of food and doing work and all these sorts of things. You know, oil me down or whatever. You know, go, oh, it's so lovely. Yeah, we can do that. That's totally fine. So, you know, I'm about it. And, you know, just before I go into anything else, it's just because I've got... You know, I live life on difficult mode. Okay? You know, I like to do things properly. Yeah. So, I mean, I might still go to the gym, but even if I was at the gym, do you know what I mean? I'd be thinking, you know, I'd be philosophizing with like some other pumped up man. Yeah, yeah. Being generous, I have to be. Who knows? Right. So, a continuation of a previous topic of ours we've talked about. Um, the social color theory aspect, and this particularly is, um, I've said this, I kept saying that, does this make sense? It is of my own interest, of my own opinion, right, rather than of interest in somebody else's opinion sort of thing, so that's why it does sound a bit weird, but I guess I am talking to myself, so, you know, something like that. But anyway, yes, particularly, specifically, um, so, uh, so check, what was it? selectively of that opinion this particularly applies to me because you know i see myself as a black person anything this guy thinks he's a black person right but that's what the topic is about today and black people and you know i am obviously i'm talking about sort of being a goth and like an anarchist and all these sorts of things which you know would be they're quite characteristically like black you know that's just that is the fact of the matter um and, you know, sadly, these people have also been quite heavily stigmatized, um, which obviously isn't actually <laughs> what, you know, it's, it's not what anybody wants. But um, there's also that comment. But I don't, that's, I'm not drawing that as a comparative thing. I don't think that has anything to do with the price of cabbage or anything, as we, you know, as you're saying from that other video. But yeah. But also, just a comparative with all other black people because I think there's even more black crowds, right? That I'd coin as black. Because obviously, you know, as we say, we say, oh, yeah, a black person, we say like an African person or someone who's like, like black skin. And, uh, well, I'd say, yeah, they are quite characteristically black people. And, um, you know, uh, but I, I think it's more about, um, like traditions and, uh, like orders and all these sorts of things, right? Which I think lots of communities will have. Now, what I'm also saying is potentially there'll be like coloured people who also call themselves coloured. So maybe they're like quite aware of this. <laughs> maybe this is a thing within the African community already. And, you know, we're just ignorant of it, whatever. Because people are racist and nobody sort of. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Not getting to that either. But. Um, yeah, potentially there's like other colours in the community and stuff within all communities, right? But what I'm saying is, at some point, you know, like we'll use the hair for example, right? Okay. Well, I was going to go into this bit later, but for black people and hair and humans and hair is quite a big deal. And um, goths are obviously quite characteristically they've got the beehives. You know, sometimes they'll shave the back or whatever. I've got a shave back at the moment. Or and sometimes, sometimes they'll spike up the back or whatever. In the like, 2000s, they did anyway. So I keep doing this lately. And, you know, the, the long side bits and the curly hair is quite an English thing. And what I feel like is, because uh, like, it's like a high priest thing, isn't it? It's like, a, it's like a status symbol within the community. Like having hair is like, you you have to like actively fight for your hair in many respects. And in war as well, especially, we'll... I don't know, we'll talk about that, I guess. In war, like scalping is a big thing, um, which is actually collecting like the hair, shaving people's heads um, to either prepare them for something or re-indoctrinate them into a new community 
bought it, dehumanize them and all these sorts of things. Um, or just to signify a beginning, like, um, like sometimes I'd shave my head, I, I do shave my head, I've shaved my head from being a young boy to also being like just um, like a couple months back I shaved my head. And sometimes I like to just regrow it all out again, but I've always liked to have long hair and I've always taken quite a lot of pride in my hair. Um, but then also socially, I think what happens is, especially mohawks, right, is um, also a symbol which potentially is either, I don't know if they're all unified or it actually transcends over different communities again. But the mohawk, I think, is something to do with um, almost you, it's like you're, it's not, it's like, it's not like you're dishonored, but it's like maybe. But it's like you're maybe like a mercenary or something, or like uh, you're maybe not interested in sort of like being too honourable or something. So you shave the size of your hair, but you leave the mohawk, and then you're like, you know, that's like the Romans are like that. There's mohawk tribes, but also, you know, they've also got the long, big. You know, I don't know. I don't know about um, Indian. I shouldn't call them Indian. Apparently, um, Native Americans probably got proper names as well. Proper cool names, and. It's where a lot of this ties in. Hey, hey. So we've got this thing here, and we're going to talk another video. We're going to talk a bit more about this stuff, this concept. But I've seen this, right? And I'd see it a lot in, funny enough, English engineers would have them on their arms. And I thought, oh, it's just to keep their sleeves up or something. But then I noticed that um, there's, in like cowboy films and stuff and cowboy photos, right? There'd be people, and they'd just be painted on, on their sleeves, on sometimes on both sides. And you read up about it, and it says it's something to do with mourning, right? Which makes sense characteristically. People would wear a black thing on their arm when someone had died. But these people were wearing them all the time. Now, whether it's not it's because people were dying a hell of a lot of the time, but sometimes there'd be two. And I was thinking, weren't these people, these people like bankers and doctors and all these sorts of things? So I was thinking maybe it's something to do with sort of like uh, their figures in the community or something. But then you also see pirates do it, right? And they'll have little charms hanging from them. And you see... Um, Native Americans that do it, and they'll have feathers. And I was like, maybe there's some sort of like a, like a black order or something. But we'll get into this later. But um, back to the hair. Do you want to talk about hair? So yeah. So what we were noticing is potentially, you know, some people traveling across the world on their feet, you know, walking, and suddenly they go, whoa, hang on a minute, you got hair just like um, a, a didgeridoo doodah. You've got me, him. You've got me, him. And then all the high priests get together and they go, hey, look at that. And maybe they have a rock, or maybe they have a bit of a drink. Um, who knows? But yeah, hair transcends. Some people don't give a toss, <laughs> couldn't give a toss about their hair. You know, they just have normalish hair. Good to them. And I'd say they're just normal people. Some people <laughs> are weird. And they tend to be really, really quite weird. <laughs> um, in the sense that, you know, you could almost say that they were magic. So... These people, I'd say, were um, like shamans and stuff in the community and all these sorts of things. And there are uh, like accolades to it. And there are like achievements and things and like stories and all these sorts of things which tie into it. And, uh, you know, just part and parcel of being that sort of mindset. And it's just a similarity sort of thing as well. But I don't know. Who knows where these ideas come from? Or, how it works but it's definitely interesting so yeah i'd say um there are certain characteristics and even being a shaman might not be <laughs> you don't have to be shaman to be black or whatever but i i think that's probably pretty specific to these sorts of communities anyway maybe um but i don't know i feel like even white people i don't really believe white people are a thing because i think White people are aiming to be something which is sort of like pure or like clean or you know powerful and all these sorts of things. But I feel like they they lie. Do you know what I mean? I do think people are like that at some point, but um, I, they're just dishonest. And I feel like that's what it means to be like a white person is just dishonesty um, and elitism and all these sorts of things. And they don't really necessarily work. And they're not that necessarily real. But then, if you get into the nitty gritty part of it, um, realism is they'll have a lot of traditions which will be similar to the black people. But the black people, I think, like, you know, it's sort of, you could say it's like darkness or it's evil or whatever. But I feel like, I don't know if we talked about this in the previous one, but for 
a black person it's like it's acknowledged and it's about actually taking power of that um you know and being like quite upfront about it whereas um a white person it's almost like it's like the dark side of that person you know so yeah i've always tried to and i know where my bread buttered with black people and they're not necessarily <laughs> any nicer oh, my face is not really there like i'm a fan of but um yeah you sort of i sort of know what i'm doing there i guess a little bit but anyway back to the similarities between black people as i was saying so other black communities which i'm thinking are potentially a thing are like gypsies right jewish people um I can't really think of any others, but I think, yeah, like the Native Americans, um, maybe some stuff in sort of Mexico, but I think even in these, we're sort of getting to some other colours, like Jewish people were quite characteristically, um, uh, denoted as like blue, but there's also a lot of black aspects to it, and gypsies as well, quite denoted to have green elements, and like, you'd say an Irish gypsy, I wouldn't necessarily call them black at all, I'd say they're completely green like solidly green and green and blue and orange and white stuff like this um i don't know if i'll get wrong for them blue or what, but um yeah that's more of it but anyway that's my that's my there's there are colors throughout societies and cultures and stuff but you know so these were some these are some of the black groups and maybe in asia and stuff well definitely in asia as well you probably got these as well but i don't really know too many asian communities and stuff but definitely the samurais, you might say, um, have their sort of traditions and stuff like this. And there's a lot of crossover and a lot of respect as well between these um, people. Whether or not you choose to acknowledge that they're black or not, you know, it's just respect is respect. Um, but um, what else? It keeps going, I'd say. And I'd say, you know, it's about taste. You know, taste and um, social code and music as well i feel like there's, there's certain notes and certain keys which actually transpose in certain um musical styles which actually just black people are just better <laughs> and they have better music you know and um i don't know i think we can all appreciate that and really i think it'd be quite nice to be a humanistic and take a humanistic approach to be able to acknowledge that these things do crop up because i see on um that, that app, TikTok, right? Don't ask me why I'm on there. There's, there's, some, there's some good people on there. There's some good people on there. So I'm on this app anyway, and I'm scrolling through, and there's this, there's this like, black girl, and she's talking about, like, gothic gatekeepers and stuff. And she was saying how, like, oh, I think, like, well, I think it started here. And some of the people saying, oh, no, it started in England. And, you know, all this sort of thing about goths. And, but, you know, it would be nice to think that just like the stars in the sky and stuff, things crop up at different times. And, you know... It is just it's it's within humans. It's with it's a human appeal sort of thing appeal, um, but it's not. It didn't start anywhere because that's what I always think is quite funny about goths. You don't really realise you're a goth. You just like your poetry or you like your your moaning. You're oh, sitting around and doing you know goth things, um, and you're just characteristically goth. And whereas when people say oh there aren't gothic gatekeepers, I'd say well yeah no but there are. There are like stereotypes, <laughs> and there are sort of there, are, you know, intrinsities, in 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 intrinsities, intrinsities, <laughs> something like that. So there's there's not levels to it, but there's definitely a culture to it. You can't just say, oh, you you just wear black and you suddenly you call yourself a goth. Yeah, but yes, but there's there's like there's not I'm saying that there's not rank because obviously goth is quite humiliating in my opinion as a goth, um, and as decent people. But there is definitely is it as aspects and there's elements and stuff. Um, you know, you can whether you choose to admit that or not. I don't care. Um, but yeah, if you've got a mullet or if you've got a mohawk, you're not a goth. You're a mullet or you're a mohawk. Um, so bear that in mind. Uh, if you want to be a goth, you don't shave the sides of your head. Um, you're supposed to grow your hair, and you can shave it all off. And yeah, if you've got a mullet. Or a mohawk, I, you know, I advise you to shave it all off. And even if you've got dreads, I'd say shave it off and get big hair. Big hair, people. Big hair, that's what I want to see, big hair. So I probably pissed off a lot of people there, but, you know, um, 
Church are all right. Um, See, some of the Mohawks are all right. Um, yeah. Okay. And then, you know, if you've just got this hair because you don't really know what you're doing and you just think it looks good, you, you do that as well. You do, do what you like, you do what you want, really. You don't have to have um, a hair of a psychopath. And I've actually I've actually bought a wig, right? Bought a wig. It's right here. <laughs> it's handy. Okay. Because I'm a psychopath. Okay. Um, uh, bought one of these wigs um, because I don't know one I think they look kind of interesting and two because I, actually, I was looking into this political thing and it was actually done by some parties and stuff and I was thinking it might actually be the scalps right of other people like because obviously sword work and fighting comes heavily into the hair and maybe even in the bible and stuff I'd say like Samson cut his hair, lost his power, he had to grow it all back to get his strength again. Um, that could also be a thing, you know. Um, personally, with me, I haven't had the hair I've wanted to have, um, which, if people know me, um, you know, the classic sort of rolls in the back, flicks on the side, and a good fringe, and a solid height, um, you know, that's, that's the hair that I like to have. You know, it's very well. Sometimes I'd like to, you can do a lot with that hair as well. You can, it's quite versatile to have that. But I haven't had that hair in a very long time. It's been very um, uh, ragged and uh, cut out and bashed about and all these sorts of things. So I don't know if I will <laughs> ever even have that hair again. But who knows? Um, yeah. The hair on the head, though. So I'm pretty sure that um, they might have been scalps, actual scalps. And, you know, I knew scalp was a thing, but I didn't think English people would be crazy enough to actually wear them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I don't know if that's the case. But anyway, this is, you know, it's a political statement, I guess. It's not just a theatrical thing. But, you know, I should probably take these out. I'm trying to get these curls nice on the side. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take it off now. But I'm have yeah, I'm, I'm not, not gonna wear it right now. Not with the street fighter shirt on and a, that was like dangerous. <laughs> but yeah, oh dear. I don't know. I think I feel like we covered everything a little bit. Um, black people are good at music, and we've also got, um, you know, we're brilliant people, and uh, yeah, we know. Um, we also you know, rule the night and the streets forever and the high seas. Still do. So, you know, that's something that I'd like to be about as well. Because I love those things. And I'd never leave. And I find out recently, actually, I probably shouldn't say it. I'm not going to say all you particular people because I don't, I will get to it one more. I might do a bit of an ancestry thing, but it was quite shocking, actually. I find out that I'm actually related to some really really like unbelievably like yes unbelievably um significant people right but they're all like quakers and stuff um, well i'll tell you you're not gonna chase me down but one of them for example blood relative um was elizabeth fry for example who was the woman on the back of the five pound note <laughs> if you've ever seen the old paper five pound notes the woman on the back people used to go to school go oh, it looks like your mother a little bit I go, funny enough, <laughs> I'm related to her. And she was a Quaker, and she did prison reformation, which means basically in a time when the prisoners, they didn't basically feed the prisoners and stuff, and, you know, if you were in prison, it was sort of like your own. You, you kind of screwed, and you just left to die. Um, she would actually, you know, she'd save a lot of prisoners' lives and all these sorts of things. And then another one, quite close, to Elizabeth Fire around the same time was actually John Cabri. <laughs> so the man who actually, um, I don't want to tell you anymore because then you, we're getting into like my great great grandfathers and stuff, and you're going, like, This is, oh, I know where you live. Don't look at my door. You said you wanted to kill you. But yeah, well, another one was John Cabri, which is the man who founded Cadbury's, like the chocolate people. He's a blood relative. Um, 
quite close as well. So, you know, you can do your snoofer and, uh, snoofer and, <laughs> um, but, you know, where's my money? You might be asking, or I might be asking, but one, I don't really know, they probably, they're sort of like, uh, I'm not telling, I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't think I'd, one, be in line for any of my, or I might actually have to look into that, um, not that I want the money, and two, uh, they're like Quakers and stuff, so they're like Catholics, so, you know, they were, all, all these people were essentially, not non-profit, but like, they shared the profit, like, fairly and stuff, and the Cadbury's guy, John Cadbury, he actually built um, Bourneville, the town, I'm just telling you now, I'm well proud of this stuff, I'm well like, impressed by these people, um, he built Bourneville, especially as a, as a gift, I think, for his workers, so I might go to Bourneville one day, and we'll come, we'll all tear up the place, we're like, dun, 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 dun. well, technically, actually, I'm a relative, so I'm coming in, and I'm head bottom, and we'll munch up a load of chocolate, if you wouldn't, um, but we're talking, we're talking about black people right now. So anyway, that's, yes, religion as well. Religion ties in with being black. Um, you know, yeah, just being true to the streets. I know that sounds cheesy, but it's true. <laughs> um, so yeah, never really, you know, wanting to be rich, I guess, and being also very good at making a god awful amount of money. Um, and, uh, yeah, oh, loads of good stuff, really. Just the best people in the world. And, you know, I'd like to think that we're all sort of unified. As much as, you know, I don't mind a bit of competition. Not really, I don't really want to compete, but, you know, obviously. Um, it's all good, though, isn't it? Something like that. Something like that. Until it's not, as well. Because, yeah. Um, yes, yes. Well, you know, then we get in, you get into your greens and your blues and your reds, then people, you know. <laughs> but you know, people are still people. But significantly, they're black people. The black people are anyway. And I have always been happy and I like to call myself a black person. Um, so hopefully, yeah, that's a bit of background on that. And uh, you might think, all right, I think I'm a black person actually. Hmm, yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, I'll get my. Well, I'll well, say I'll get my organ out. I'll get my organ out. Get the guitars out. Organ. Start playing some just the best music you will ever hear, ever. And uh, we'll just tear up the place, pretty much. Lovely. Okay. And there's probably quite a lot of crossover as well. Now I say this. Because lots of things that you might think, oh, yeah black stereotypes especially in England and crime um, and language even you might think oh these are, these are black words but you'd be right they're just maybe from being you know like other criminals and stuff and that sort of thing um, but yeah well cr criminals criminals something like that pirates are pirates really criminals you know I mean, I wouldn't mess with them, but I'm not saying they're not decent people. Otherwise, you know, everyone would be completely dead, wouldn't they? But, uh, anyway, we'll leave it at that, everyone, and thank you, and, uh, you know, we will um, carry on being the best, I guess. And uh, I've, I've got some good stuff as well for everyone, just everyone. Um, so be prepared for that, okay? And, uh, yes, God bless, and, yeah, stay tuned for this, which is coming up, which is pretty much a similar sort of thing. Um, but the next one coming up, just looking at my things, is a bit of a scientific one. Before we talk about the next one, these are both actually quite heavy uh, spiritual topics. Um, the next one is pain and the brain, and the scientific look at, like, matter and the afterlife as well and sense it's a whole it's a whole lot of sense and then the one after that is called um high rule right and if there is such a thing was there such a thing and why aren't we employing it right okay here we go <laughs> show you later <laughs> that's it
didn't look quite as good as I wanted to, but you know, one day if you ever see that face, you know. Yeah, it's so. I mean, squibs. See you later.